So team, uh, welcome to the automation testing with frameworks session two. We had uh, an orientation session followed by day one. Okay, so ideally there was supposed to be an email yesterday itself. And hoping that's already gone. As far as I remember, it's gone. Is everybody received an email? So yeah, Shini, like okay. At least a couple of people are confirming that they have received, and some are not. Okay, I will maybe again. Okay. No, no, link for the videos. Uh, Rajeshwari, ideally, yes, uh, with Java. Okay. All right. Cool. So we, we had a, a orientation session followed by day one where we are trying to understand the Selenium bit more in detail. Like you know, we, we talked about when is it started, what are the different components, what are the different uh, you know uh, suites it has, and the first thing that we are going to understand now today is about the ID for the people. Just for the people, I'll show one thing that we discussed was about the content. So these are the different contents that we're going to talk about. Uh, let's start with the, like we understood this yesterday, right? The different components and how they have merged together. So let's look into, uh, of course, we're going to spend a good amount of time in understanding this locator identification options. Uh, and let's let's look at what is this ID is tool about, you know, all about and how can we work on it. When it comes to IDE, uh, don't get confused. There are two IDs, one, the initial one which started by Selenium community, it's called Selenium IDE. And this is a simple extension to the Firefox browser. So it's a simple extension to the Firefox browser. By default, when Selenium started, or when they started developing Selenium, uh, by default, all the scripts, everything that is developed uh, was targeted for Firefox browser. And especially in IDE, it is just an extension to the Firefox browser. At least when you go to web driver, then you can convert that code so that it works to Internet Explorer. It works to you know Chrome uh, and other browsers, Safari, etc. But IDE was Whatever you do it in the Selenium IDE, it was just an extension to Firefox. So that means you can create and run only in the Firefox browser. And uh, they were maintaining it well for a certain time. I don't remember exact version, but somewhere uh, in the Firefox version 53 or 54, uh, this, this got majorly broken. I mean, there were major issues. And parallelly, what happens, uh, what happened? There's a team called Catalon. who also started investing their time and developing an IDE. And this is more like Catalon IDE, we call it like. And this is an extension of Chrome. It's an extension to Google Chrome. And they were actually, you know, making a good job and it, the, the tool was also coming up nicely. And uh, very less people use it IDE. Like, you know, we just have only one or two sessions on IDE to just understand some very basics because most of the things that we're going to do it is on the web driver that's on the Eclipse uh, environment, development environment with the web driver. So 
since anyway there were not many people using IDE, the Selenium community is also like stopped investing time onto this IDE because this was really picking up nice. And uh, more popular browser like Google Chrome was also supported and it's an extension to Google Chrome, not like a Firefox. So they really stopped uh, taking care of these fixes and enhancements. So from there onwards, I think it's it's a story that I'm talking about in the last one year. Now this this got popular. So when you say IDE, people generally suggest to go for Catalan IDE rather than Selenium IDE. Because apart from whatever Selenium was supporting, it also has better options. And uh, this can export this code into multiple languages. Like you can export this code into Java, C Sharp, Python, Ruby, Ruby on Rails uh, in the form of robot framework uh, format. And of course, the Catalan format. So that's why what we're going to pick up now is actually not a Selenium IDE, it's a Catalan IDE, but uh, it's you should consider more like a V2 of this IDE. If you consider Selenium IDE is like a V1, an extension of that, a better IDE than that is actually Catalan IDE. So how do you get that and how do you, you know, add it as a plugin to your Google Chrome? So let's look at that. So I'll also show you like uh, if you had to do that on uh, Selenium IDE, you should have definitely had only Firefox browser. For example, I'll just go here. And uh, okay, I'm not going to update it now. Can you see something like here? This is Selenium IDE. So there's a new version as available probably. So this is how Selenium IDE looks like. Okay. So there is a simple recording option. There's a, uh, you know, pass on exceptions when they come. And there's obviously after you create a test, you can actually run them. Okay. This is the running of the test run all the tests and you can step over a command and you can actually control the speed, execution speed. Uh, so this and here you're going to create some test suits and test cases, etc. And in the bottom, it will show you the execution log and uh, references of these methods. Basically what happens, everything is available as a command. For example, you wanted to click on a link. So all you're going to do is uh, you'll use this method like click and you will mention on which locator we are going to click on it. And what, for example, especially not click, let's say you have something like type on which text box you wanted to type. So the text box you're going to identify and we're going to understand the identification mechanism here. Maybe something like whose ID equal to uh, just say there is something called first name. Okay, I'm just taking an example. It's, it's ID is called first name then I want to enter something like Schenker here. So then it will generate a line. Okay, so once you open the website or web application, go to this locator whose ID is first name and type a name called Schenker there. Like this, you're going to instruct uh, entire test case with all the steps. Obviously, first step is to launch your application or browse to the particular application. Then let's say you have a, a login form then you'll go and enter first name, last name, or maybe a registration form. Then you'll enter all the details. And the last step will be something like, you know, you click on it. Or you could simply go ahead and record also. Let's do one thing. Let's just quickly uh, try doing this. Okay, first I'll create one test suit. So something like, I'll create something like uh, test suit one okay i created some test suit and then you can add a test case to it something like test one sorry i should add a new let me click over here this is add test okay, let me This is basically selecting the test cases. So 
okay that's fine we'll just go ahead and record first so all you do is you'll click on start recording and once you click on start recording now it's in the recording mode you can see it has become uh, in a recording mode we'll go and over here try to browse to any website i'm just trying to browse to a website called anyauth.com and see if there is anything generated over here no so all you do is you'll come back here and just click on this features link you can see over here there is something came in the bottom uh, okay so there's one line generated over here right one is generated like click css equal to and there is a link to the page scrolls we'll understand all these things what is this mechanism we'll understand so but if you see two lines got generated one is open uh, slash means like whatever the url is mentioned here that will be that will be opened and then you have a click so basically you clicked on a link okay after that i wanted to click on one more link like about this any art so you can see on the bottom right corner uh, it was showing up what i did and there was a small pop-up came so you can you can watch it again so I'll, i'm just going to click on pricing you can see something coming up in the bottom right corner and suppose i'm just clicking on faqs link and then i want to click on some contactors link and I have few text fields here. Suppose I wanted to fill with something like uh, Shankar, let's say Shankar at some abc.com. Just say some phone number and some message. So I'm just entering all these values. I'm not going to really click on it for now because it's not a proper data. So let's see what happened on the tool. Right after you do all this, just go back to the tool and say stop, stop recording. So when I did all these, you can see some script has been generated here. Okay, first point, uh, how did I get this, right? So you would have this question like, how did I get this ID? You will not have by default on the Firefox browser. So what you need to do is sometimes some people might not even have Firefox browser right so first is first step is to install the Firefox browser and uh, the version that I have here you should see about Firefox the version that I have is something like 56.0 but the latest version is something like 66.0.3 okay that's why it was suggesting me to update it so go ahead and install the Firefox version uh, Firefox browser how do we do it you would have some Google Chrome and simply go to google.com and just say like Firefox 56.0 you'll actually download and then you add you install that particular browser only when you have the firefox browser installed the next step what you have to do is from the same firefox browser you can go to google and say selenium id for firefox selenium IDE for Firefox and then you will get something like this get this extension for Firefox and just click on it and then you will get an option here like since it was already added for me I'm getting a remove option but as you saw when I was just trying to browse the very first thing that was coming up is like add to Firefox so you will get an option called add to Firefox so you will simply click on add to Firefox. Then the ID gets added as an extension to your Firefox browser. In fact, after that, your Firefox will be closed and restarted. Let it do that because that's the only way it will completely add as a proper thing to your browser. Is everybody clear? If I have to just quickly say, the very first thing is, 
installing the Firefox browser itself because most of you would not have. And the one, if you don't want to get into uh, the latest versions and uh, issues, you can go ahead and install 56.0. Okay. Second, like, you know, just go to Google and search for Selenium IDE extension. Uh, I'll tell you generally real real projects won't use this Rajeshwari to answer your question straightforward No real projects will use it. That's why we are also not going to spend too much time just like you know one two sessions. That's it Yeah, even the new version uh, is available for Chrome as well. So making they're making some enhancements to that I can see um, but Chrome I can safely say uh, you know I'll introduce to both of that even Catalan recorder also I'll introduce so you you figure it out which is the best and sometimes that both will be useful actually so all you do is Google and search for Selenium IDE and uh, you will get an option called uh, add to Firefox okay once you do this your browser will be restarted That's fine. Yeah, Catalan, that's why like, you know, there are a lot of debates and a lot of good categorizations when to go for Catalan and all. I'll show both. There's not no harm. I mean, you can just play around. It's not going to take a lot of time. So this is how you're going to do Selenium ID. So any questions on this? And that's when you will see this icon here. And for launching it, all you have to do is just click on this. When you just click on this, that's how the Selenium ID is going to launch. And after that, I did just a click of this button. And if Firefox browser is not already open, it will automatically open. Then type the URL, where do you want to go? So the URL will come over here. And with a command called open command. So if you can just observe this, what has happened when I recorded the code, what are all these things? The first command it used is an open command and it simply used target as slash. What is this means? Whatever is mentioned in this URL section is going to be open. That is a meaning of slash. And when you are actually opening or browsing to a URL, no value required. There is no value required because we are not entering anything in any text box or we are not clicking on anything. So there's no value required. If you want, you can have some comment uh, like, you know, this is a staging version of any art, uh, any art application. If you want to have some comments, you can have it over here. So this is basically for comment section. Once this application is opened, then what happened? I clicked on a link. Okay. I clicked on a link. Uh, and and you know, that's what is being did it probably I just clicked on some uh, scroll option I think so that's why this is generated Okay, I can see them a lot of good improvements on the IDE side as well competition to the Catalan recorder. So This will also be useful for us So you can see this there is a tar target generated and then I clicked on uh, a link called uh, about any art link so about any yeah, so there is something like about any art link so that you can see it generated with some X path We're going to talk about all these things very in detail. What is X path how to generate this X path? Manually how to generate this CSS manually so you need to understand certain syntaxes uh, For now you just go ahead uh, with as it is but once we understand fully then, then we'll, we'll talk in detail about like different examples of uh, CSS X path, but this seems to be very simple. For example, there is something called C name like what happened in C name is that uh, It's an ID. Okay, let's go here. This is C name. Okay, what is this C name and what it is trying to do? Here this is where it is entered Shankar and this field is C name and how did it identify it as C name is on any browser Firefox Chrome uh, every browser will have you know just do one thing 
right click over there and see an option called inspect element there's a simple option called inspect element every browser will have that internet explorer firefox chrome every browser will have this just click on inspect element option and then you will see the html code that is behind this page every web page you will have an HTML, of course, HTML plus uh, CSS, all the latest versions will have that. And in that, it will exactly take you to the code which is pertaining to this particular locator. This locator is name, right? And uh, it's, you can see that code is highlighted. It's basically the HTML tag is input. So its tag is input. And it has properties like ID is C name and it's a class form control and it's uh, it, it's it's form control again I uh, after that you have a space and C name and it's placeholder is name and then you have uh, a message there like you know please enter your name and it's basically just leave this and it's basically of a type text box. It's a text box where you can enter the value. So what is important for us is when a web application coming for us for the automation, you need to know what are all the different type of locators that are there. Like is it a text box? Is it a, a radio button, a push button, a link, or a list box? What it is. So we need to know the type of that locator. So that is clearly showing it is a text box, right? And most important is when, when we have multiple text boxes, right? We have one text box name, another text box uh, email address, and one more text box phone number. How is my Selenium is able to differentiate these three? So this is what happens actually. So this is your tool, automation tool. In fact, any automation tool. And this is your web application. And your web application has different locators, text box, one more text box, and let's say uh, uh, a checkbox. Yeah, these are you can call them as web elements, or these are you can call them as locators. People call with the different terminology, and this is like a button, etc while your developer is developing this application he will provide all these properties and what you see in that html code are those object properties the locator properties what are the properties that we have seen we have we saw them there one is the html tag we saw right then there was a unique way to identify it what was a unique way it was using is it was using ID. Okay, there is a unique ID like C name. And there is something called type. What is the type of this locator? It's a text box. And there is something like a message. What message should come over there? So, like this, first text box has the properties. Similarly, second text box also will have the properties. Similarly, this button also will have the properties and this button also will have the properties. Ideally, if our developers provide an ID for every control and that to a unique ID, then our job is going to be very simple. All you are going to do is you are going to use this ID and automate your application because your ID can uniquely identify this locator in the form. Because when you are recording, what is the biggest problem for your automation tools is, or biggest challenge that automation tools, any tool, Selenium, UFT, Rational Robo, VSTS, you think of any automation tool, the challenge what they're going to go through is how to identify these locators unique way. There are two text boxes, so how can I differentiate the first text box from second text box? Obviously, for a better appearance and all, my developer will have it of same size, same width, same height, and in fact, same color coding. So almost all the properties will be same, 
but then how can I differentiate? <clears throat> Some good developers will differentiate by providing a unique ID for each of these controls. But if there is no unique ID, then it's going to be a big problem to identify it uniquely. And that will be the challenge for these automation tools. And that's why a lot of times we should start discussing it very early with the development team when the actual project is under development. Uh, you know, you can we need to talk to them and ensure these unique IDs are provided for every locator. But a lot of times we work in maintenance projects and uh, we figure it out. Most of the letters, you know, most of the controls do not have an ID. That is when we have to go to XPath, CSS and all that. We'll talk about that. But if unique IDs are there, then you can see Selenium ID or any automation tool did not go for uh, XPath and other stuff, right? You can see what happened here. It did not really go for, oh, was it like, oh, that was the one which crashed. Okay. Yeah, these are some of the problems that we get. Okay, let me do one thing. I think that's got crashed. We'll, 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 no, it's supposed to be, yeah. Okay, we'll create a new project. Uh, but you saw that uh, what happened is it did not really go for uh, other properties when ID is there, right? So some of these properties, it's very important, like ID, what you see here. And what happens if I do it on the email? Let me just go ahead and do it on this uh, here. So you can say inspect element Q. Now you can see it has a unique ID called email, right? All other properties may be of same, but still the ID is different. And what if, if I do it on this? Now this has a C phone, contact phone. What happens if I do it on this button? Let me do it on this button. So now you can see this is a button and it has a unique ID called C form. If there is any other button over here on the side by side, uh, it would be still a button, but its ID would have been different. So wherever we have this ID, then the Selenium and automation tools are going to use the ID. But if it has, uh, let's take this link, right? So if I inspect this link, all the HTML tags that you see with the anchor tag, a tag, they are called links. And you can see the link has a link text called about any ought. So that is a link text. What about this? Just click on this inspect element. This is also an anchor tag and it has a login link. Right? What about this image? Just go and inspect the element. It's an image and it has an alt property called any ought and it is of width 140. So these are the attributes which I'm talking about and who will provide these attributes by the way? While developing the application, your developer would provide these attributes, right? So from that, the Selenium ID or any automation tool will try to capture what is a unique property and then it will try to use for generating the script. So let's go ahead and see Recording a new one. Uh, yeah, I was trying to do that. Open an existing project, but we did not really save it. That was the problem, right? So we did not save it. And let's see if I close what will happen. It's already closed. See, this is a problem. This is a bug, right? I mean, if, if you are a tester for this, I don't know what this is trying to do for you. It's a bug in the system, right? I'm trying to say close Selenium ID. It's already closed. And let's see what happens if I try to create a new project. So let's create some project. Any ought, uh, I would say, I will just say any ought. Okay, now it's open. And then I will create a new, I'm, I'm just doing it from the beginning again. I'll say a new test first. This is a test, so I'll just rename it. Rename. Rename by default, it came up with the test case name as you know unnamed. I would say home page test. Okay, I'm going it in a very proper way. So I'll say home page test. Okay, rename it. 
now this has become a home page test and then I want to record so now you can see now itself there is a change in the so since it's upgraded to the latest one uh, you can see some of the latest things okay so just say <clears throat> I'll close this browser here I'll close this here just to ensure the Firefox is opened If not opened also try to just click on record and see what happens Okay, it's asking what is the base URL so that it will go and open that I will say any com. Oh, I have to give the complete URL. So let's try to give a proper URL Right and just see start recording Now you can see the website is opened And then I will click on some of these links. Uh, just trying to do the same thing what I just did before. And trying to enter some values. By the way, this is uh, not a valid email. I'm just giving it. So I have this so now I will go back and stop it stop recording so you can see the similar code that has been generated wherever IDs are there it used ID but wherever IDs are not there it's trying to use this CSS okay it's trying to use the CSS so let's just play back as it is once and see what happens run the current test So you can see it just executed everything and If you see everything, you know, there's no if there are any errors it will show up in red color There's nothing is being Failed so you can see everything is properly executed you can also control this execution speed from here like it was fast so you can make it a bit slow if you want okay and now you can just run it once How many of you know this product? Any art? Okay. This is a product uh, from the Workers INC, which again, uh, Karthik is the director for that as well. Karthik and the team has done this product, which is like a test management tool. People can based on the selenium engine. This has been developed So you can do manual testing with this you can do automation testing with this like you know, can create test suits You can run the test suits you can execute your tests on selenium cross browser platforms So based on the selenium engine uh, this tool has been developed and these are all the different uh, Products from the same work as INC Okay so yeah you can get to know more about it we will introduce it uh, as we go even there will be some trainings on this as well basically for if you have a web ui and you want to do a cross browser testing and there is a core engine and there is nice reporting any application like html css php you can use any of the web applications it's it's a basically a test tool i can say. both manual and automation can be done through this Okay, so and you can actually there is an introduction video if you watch this then you will completely get it uh, What is this product is all about? Okay, so that's how this uh, you know, it's it's recorded and let's go back and try to spend a little more understanding of this It's using these commands like click and Then what is the target to click on it? opening which URL uh, things like type 
when there is a text box and if you wanted to type something on which ID what type what value that you wanted to do and the commands are here all these are called Selenius commands basically the commands which are supported by the uh, Selenium IDE they are called Selenius commands and you can see all these commands are in the drop down you can just like since we typed whole TYP there is only one thing so but if I just type only T then these are all the commands that we have like time store store attribute store text uh, similarly if I just type something like uh, click see then I have like check click click it etc so these are the commands I mean you don't need to be master in all these commands or you don't need to really like as I told you uh, in real time people generally don't use this it's it's not that important but like you know what are we basically what you can do from here is you can understand some important things like uh, how this locator is getting identified and it's you can see it's not just ID it's giving you all the possible things that you can do it's giving you ID it's giving you CSS it's giving you XPath and uh, yeah different forms of XPath will 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 learn all this how to write it so what happens when you are going to do it in web driver when you are going to start working in web driver and you are going to write the program on your own for automating the application you might need uh, or let's say some of the locators will start giving you problem basically your automation will not be successful on that then you will come back to this and you will simply do a recording and see how that is identifying it and once you know oh this is identifying with so and so x path then probably you will simply copy this x path from here and then you will try to use that in your code and you may get succeeded basically wherever we will have some uh, issues while developing the automation script those are the only situations where we will come and uh, try to use this tool and see if it is going to help in any way clear that's the main purpose of this particular tool but not like your real scripts are going to be generated in this format and then you're going to you you're going to have most of these things uh, directly so that's not the case okay if you want to add a new step at any point of the time it's just more like clicking over here then in ensuring the command for example I'll just say you can go on if you want to print something it's an echo command you will just say echo and what is the value that you want to print I'll say this is the end of the test something like that you wanted to print it over here you can just just put over there if you want to have you can have a description and if you wanted to delete any step uh, at any point of the time you can just right click and say delete the command so on the right click you have this cut copy insert commands you can insert the breakpoints or you can even start recording from here or you can start play from here so few of these things you have it okay somebody said like you know um, let's save this first save this project where do you want to save it I want to save it in some ideally we are going to create a proper folder structure and we are going to save it in the right folders but let me just save it for now under the under the a D drive folder a D drive let me create a new folder here selenium ID tests something like that and in that I'm going to create this as any art so once you save it then you can actually just click off open a project and then again you will navigate to that and you'll just select it and you'll click on open it somebody was asking open an existing project so this is how you just do it just click on open then it should open it back okay this is uh, on the Firefox browser what you have I'll just quickly run it again now on the other side you have another important ID I mean so 
while doing the development, if you get into any problem, we can use any of these tools, Selenium IDE, Catalan IDE. Okay, and here you will see the log file in the bottom. And this is the message that I wanted to print. Like, no, it is, the, where is my echo message? Sorry. Let me just put it over here. Ideally, echo is actually a variable that should display. So let me So just practicing, uh, okay, so this is what I wanted to print. So this is the end of the test, right? So you can just put it in double quotes and echo, echo will simply echo it back. Um, just for practicing more on this, what I'm going to do, I'm going to share you a document again. If you just practice a couple of those examples, more than enough. There's a document which we were going through yesterday. Of course, this is like an older version screenshot, so don't uh, worry too much on them. Now the new one, you should be familiar. Like something like here, so you can type, uh, basically this is the I'm not even sure whether this website is available or not, but you can practice something like this. I'm trying to open a URL and there is a drop down. I'm trying to select something from the drop down. And there is a text box. I'm trying to type something in the text box. And there is another drop down. I'm trying to type a uh, text box and I'm trying to type something there. And there is a button which I'm trying to click the text. And after that, since I'm entering the interest rate as 80 and loan amount of 3 lakhs, 300,000, and the ideal value that should come over there is of 250932. So I'm using something called verify text. And this is a text box should give me this value. If that is going to come, that means my text box, my test case is going to be successful. So some of these examples, and then there is a slideshare.net website where you can open it, you can type something in the search box, you can click and wait. So these are the examples if you just practice, that's more than enough. So when it comes to the location identification, one, we saw it like ID. So if ID is there, then it will simply always use ID. If ID is not there, even if name is there, that is fine. Like whenever you right click on a locator, for example here, or let's go for another one. inspect element this is a link so it will not have uh, but like you might have a question what if id is not there if id is not there then it will look for name whether the name is there or not if name is there then it will simply go with name if name is not there and if it is a link ideally it will go for link text basically it will say link equal to this so like in our example also we got it right where is that in our example also you can see Is there anything came up with link? No, nothing came up with link, but what happened instead of link, it used this uh, better way of identifying that is CSS. But if you look at here, so mostly you will see CSS or XPath, okay. So when we try to write the program in the web driver, then we'll see all these types. How can I identify with uh, link text? How can I identify with 
partial link text and all that so we'll see examples on link text we'll see examples on x path how do we write um, so if it is an x path you will simply say x path equal to the corresponding value don't worry on how these values are coming so we'll learn it in a very uh, practical way like how, what is this how to write this syntax what is this slash slash what is this star and what is this at the rate id so we'll learn all that so but these are some of the examples if you just practice on ide uh, that should be more than enough okay and then we will even talk about what is a css selector how to write the different examples on css selector so any questions on the basic way of like these are the most popular commands if you just practice that will be more than enough open clicking on something instead of just clicking on you can even do click and wait for the page to load or you can type something in a text box you can verify the title of the page is correct or not you can verify the text is present in that or not you can verify an element is present or not and uh, wait for the page to load wait for an element to present wait for the table if there is a verify you know table is there verify the table is present or not if possible i'll, I'll show but we, we mostly we're going to look at all of them in the web driver okay apart from this if you wanted to even use uh, you can go for google chrome and in the google chrome you can just type catalon recorder just type catalon recorder and uh, you will get this option catalon recorder google chrome select that and again you will get a simple option here add to chrome the way we saw it in the firefox for selenium id you will get an option called add to chrome since it's already added for me i'm getting it is like remove from chrome once you add it you will get an icon here catalon recorder this is for chrome click on it and you will see a similar window of course with little better options like recording uh, play play suit play all and very important options like in exporting all these tests right so you will see and similar uh, you know help settings and speed control and then there is a better log file it will even show you screenshots whenever your test is going to fail it will even show screenshots as well and you can even maintain your variables you can even do a data driven test from here uh, but but you know we're not going to spend too much of time on all this because it's it's not really used in real time so we'll try to leverage these things from here and develop the scripts on web driver okay let me just quickly show you one more script from here probably on the same thing so go for record and uh, it's kind of telling you which application that you want to do i'll just say any com and do the same things like click on a features you can see on the rod you know right bottom corner a pop-up comes which will explain you what i did at least just get familiar with these tools uh, in installing and you know adding it to the corresponding browsers and then we'll take it from there so i'll just even click on this button and see what happens so you can see this is untitled test case and uh, i'll stop it first stop the recording so now you can see the code has been generated here almost like same click options but here you can see uh, since it is a link it is coming like link equal to features not like a CSS and an X path so it goes in the order like you know if there is an ID it will use ID if there is a name it will use name anything like name so there is nothing like name so most of the controls have ID and you know if ID is there ideally it's picking up ID and all the links will be identified with the link link equal to features link equal to pricing link equal to f you know faqs only when it does not have an id or a name or a link text then it will start going into these x path 
and I think ideally it's not recorded anything with CSS. Okay, so let me just execute. It's in a fast mode. I'll put it like slow mode and just say play. I'll tell you what's happening. It's running the suit actually. It's not running the individual test case. I would have run just the individual test case. So if you have a test suit, more than one test case, all the test cases will be running there. Okay, so now if you see, uh, And you can see everything is in like you know green that means no failed failed zero passed one and you can see from the log which operating system you have executed which browser you have executed and almost results for every step results for every single step and what is it you know time that is taken up if there are any fails it will have even a screenshot also so we'll talk about all these cases probably uh, in the next session but just to get more familiar, so this is what I was talking about. All we are going to do is once this, if you have any problem in the web driver, you'll just come over here, generate the test, and just click of a button. You can get it to web driver test ng code in the form of Java. And all you need is you take this code and put it in your web driver and start executing it. But when we go into web driver, uh, like maybe another one more session on ID and later, we are going to write this kind of code. So that's where you need the, cool. So all we are going to do is in the web driver, you know, somebody just commented saying like, it's going good, uh, amazing video. Thanks, Rashwari. Thanks for the comments. Good words. So all we're going to do is we're going to create these classes and create these methods. And we are going to write the code like, you know, driver dot find element by dot ID or by dot name by dot link text. So all these things we're going to do, we're going to use X path in between. And then we will be writing the code like driver dot quit to stop the execution and close the browsers. So that is where you need some programming skills like you know that's where the java is going to play an important role and we're going to write uh, conditional statements loops you know we're going to use object oriented concepts to do all that so that is when the actual programming starts but as of this tool it's just a recording and a playback tool and apart from java you can even convert it into like c sharp format now this is all in the c sharp format or you may want it to convert it into Python. So this is in a form of Python format. So just by click of a button, you can get it into the format that you need, uh, XML format or a robot framework. This is how robot framework tool works. And Catalan Studio. Catalan Studio generates a code like this. Okay, so we're gonna learn all these things more in detail and especially what we're going to focus majorly on this web driver with test ng is what is more popular in real time so a lot of scripts in real time for selenium will be on web driver with test ng framework all right so if you want you can just simply copy this to clipboard and then you can uh, paste it into eclipse ide and you can start in the web driver Ideally, that should that should have an option here as well. They've changed these options, a bit of it. Anyway, let me figure it out. There should be a way to export from here as well. Not that extent. Yeah, should be. No. Not to that extent that what we see in the Catalan recorder, but you can actually do up that as well. Anyway, so just try to install these two tools and you know 
create a very basic script, just, just record and you know few steps and try to play back them and try to add more steps. Uh, just play around these tools, and the next class onwards will will uh, next one more session. I'll spend it on this IDE, probably introducing some assertions. How do you add? St how do you write a script manually even if you wanted to do it? How do you select these commands? How do you select this target value? Uh, and more of failure scenarios to see how these screenshots gets generated here. I can I can even do it now as well. If I just put something incorrect here, something like instead of C phone, I'll just say phone. Then obviously the test is going to fail. And when the test is going to fail, it will take a screenshot. So this is where it will have a problem in identifying the phone number because the ID it would expect is C underscore phone, but you have coded as just phone. There is no object with the ID just phone on the on the web page. So the tool will have tough time in identifying it and that's why it's failed. And when it is failed, it will take a screenshot here and it will tell you this is what the screenshot is being generated there. We are going to do all these things, taking the screenshot and everything programmatically. Is it really taking any screenshot? Yeah, so we'll take this. So this is how the screenshot is going to look like. That is, this is how it took it. So we will also write the code to take this kind of screenshots in the program. All right. So go with this for today. Uh, try to just install these two tools and kind of uh, get get ready. We'll spend another one full session on a couple of more scenarios, and then we will move to web drivers. There's nothing much actually on this. Just like creating more test suits, test cases. How do you run them, etc. Yeah, we don't really use ID in real time. I can I can safely say that. Okay, we'll just yeah yeah we'll see that. Because I am expecting some new people will join in the next and then we'll just spend half of at least half session on that and then we'll move forward to uh, web driver. Okay, so are we going to use IntelliJ versus Eclipse? Again, there are both pros and cons actually. So I'll sh probably will spend major time on Eclipse, but I'll do show it on an IntelliJ as well. Like maybe for one or two tests and just quickly run through all the features that are available on the IntelliJ. Both are two different development environments uh, for the people who don't know. All right. Thanks everyone. Talk to you next session. Bye.